Tuhan. Oasis may have trashed a few hotel rooms, they may have swapped a few punches and played the fool for the music press, but behind all the bluster and bravado lies a genuine pot talent. Guitarist Noel Gallagher is, after all, Britain's finest young songwriter. As well as interviewing the brothers Gallagher, we call them live at the Buckley Tivoli in North Wales. Prepare for all the mayhem of a pop band and its glorious, swaggering ascendancy. The reason I started this band was because I loved music, and above all else, I loved the music that I could write. And when I joined the band, I thought, right, well, you know, there's the car. I just got to get in it and drive it about for a bit. Alaric's, I mean, <coughs> they do mean so much to people, I know they do, but I don't know why, I mean, I don't know why supersonic means something to people, it means nothing to me, you know, but, I mean, it's, it's all there for the listener, you know, and that's what it's all about, it's not about us, it's about them, you know, it's what they, it's what they get from it that matters, not us, I mean, because we can get, you know, we get to buy nice clothes and we go and travel the world and all that, what do they get? You know, they get the music. So it's it's what we can give to them, you know, really. They're trying to get the youth culture out of raves, taking drugs and stuff, and back into the gig where they belong. And it's, it's really happening. There's lots of new wave bands at the moment, but they're sort of like the ringleaders of it. And they're really good, and Liam Gallagher is just gorgeous, and I have his children. <laughs> well, they're like unique, really. I mean, compared to other things around, they're not like any other band, really. They're a brilliant band. England's the best band at the moment, I'd say. Well, they're just really new, and they're really fresh, and they don't really care what the critics say or anything, they seem really confident. Just an amazing band. Well, they're doing a 20 minute live acoustic set and then um, they're signing. And I want to get my album signed, but also I, I'd like great. to be able to say something to them. <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many trendy people here. Thank 
We signed everybody's autographs yesterday for two and a half hours and we stayed, you know, an hour and a half longer than we should have. And I know people who just like stop there and then they go, right, I'm off. But there's been people there since 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, and I, you know, we wanted to do that for them, you know what I mean, because without them we're nothing. And, they, you know, it's like if I didn't want to be in this band or if I didn't want to sign autographs or if I didn't want to, you know, live my life in a fishbowl, I'd just get up from here right now and take the case out of the van. I'd go to the airport and I'd go to Brazil and nobody could stop me because I've got the money in the bank to do that. But I don't because I want to do it and I want to be here. And that's it, I love it. You've been thrown at me from Coconut Star. said to me, they were there, oh, your band's, yeah, it's top, you're just a ball of eye, what might happen, what do you mean? I'm only gutted because you're not right about your band. You know what I mean? The reason why we're in every paper is because there's something to write about. We're playing the game, and we mean it, and we're honest, and we've got the best songs, so that's why we're in everyone's face at the moment. Before the album came out, uh, they were writing about what goes on on the road, and all, you know, the trouble at gigs, and, you know, having a black eye, and stuff like that, and there's been, you know, a couple of hotels, been trashed or whatever. Uh, and I was a bit like, you yeah, know, what about the music? But now the album's been reviewed and they've actually gone in and reviewed the record for what it is, then I'm happy now, you know, because now everyone knows it's a great record. Simple as that. I need to be myself.
What people have got to realise is like, there's 14-year-old kids, right, who are into this band. Who, when the Stone Roses done Spike Island, were nine. So they've never known anything like that. All they've known is Two Unlimited and the Prodigy, right? And then, there's like, 20-year-old people who were 15 at Spike Island who've now grown up. And they remember that, and they can see, I think, they can see some in us that they got from Spike Island. But the important thing is, is that there's a lot of 14-year-old kids who were nine when Spike Island was happening and they couldn't get in or they weren't even interested in music and we would be the first band that they get into. And then if we can turn them on to the Beatles and the Stones and the Stone Roses and all the rest of it, then, you know, music goes on, doesn't it? You know, if they go out and buy a few Beatles albums and pick up a guitar and then start a band and influence the next generation of nine-year-olds, then rock and roll won't die. We have got a, an hard edge and a pit is pretty, pop, pretty poppy with it, you know what I mean? And then all you've got is like, take that, you know what I mean? After that, after that age, you know what I mean? There's nothing else, you know what I mean? People are a bit older than what, you know what I mean? Say they're 17, 18, there's nothing else for them. Do you know what I mean?